Fantastic. Well, it's great to, to be together. And, um, you know, a question that I think you are all uh, probably asking yourself at different points and in different ways at the moment um, is the question, how long? It's definitely a question that I kind of keep coming back to uh, at the back of my mind, you know, nearly all the time it's, it's there in one way or another. You know, how long is lockdown going to last? How long will we continue to see people suffering um, from this virus? How long will it be until there's an end to prejudice? How long will it be until I can give my grandchildren a hug? You know, the, the question of, of how long is one that I imagine all of us are asking um, in different ways and all of us do ask at different times. And, and it's not just relevant in this moment, is it? You know, it's easy to pull out some things as to, to why we might be asking that question at the moment. But, you know, we may ask things uh, uh, to do with how long at every season and every point in life. You know, how long will I still struggle with her over what that person did? How long until this health issue isn't something that restricts me? How long will I have to battle with that same temptation again and again? And in the same way as we talk about people kind of struggling with lockdown fatigue uh, because it just drags on and on. So with anything that we struggle with or we battle with over a long period of time, it can wear us down, it can cause us fatigue. And sometimes we just come to a, a place where we feel like it's easier to simply accept our lot, accept this is just the, the way that it is and stop hoping uh, for something better. Stop asking that question, how long altogether? And, and maybe you can relate to that. Maybe in some areas of your life, that's where you're at right now. And one of the areas of our lives where I think that this can happen all too easily if we're, we're not careful is in the area of prayer. And I believe that God is inviting us to grow in prayer, to both individually and as a church together this year to, to grow in prayer. And that's why we've been, been coming back to, to Jesus to say, teach us to pray. And, and as we ask that question we, we find that prayer is so much more exciting and vibrant than, than just trying to say the right words as we as we talk to God you know prayer is first and and foremost about relationship it's about talking and taking time with our heavenly father being refreshed by him, uh, fixing our eyes on him, enjoying him, worshipping him. Uh, you know, that's the foundation of prayer. The, the leaping off point that changes everything. Uh, and prayer is about submission and trust. It's coming to God, not just to, to ask him to do stuff for us, but giving the things to God that we're concerned about, trusting him with them. It's making Jesus king, it's casting our burdens and worries onto him, letting him be the one who guides us and leads us forwards. Prayer is also powerful. Jesus gives us his authority and so when we pray we release the power of God into people's lives and into situations. As we pray people are healed, lives are changed, God's provision is released. You know prayer is something for us to be excited about and do you know this, all of this is, is what can then sometimes actually make it all the harder when as we pray, we continue to struggle with the same things personally. Or we continue to see the, the same injustice around the world. Something in us starts to cry out, how long God? And, and, and if we're not careful, prayer fatigue can start to set in. We might still agree with all of those different statements about prayer that, that in theory prayer is exciting, it's powerful, it's about relationship, it's this act of submission and, and trust. But if we're honest, inside we're just not sure how effective prayer really is. And then as we're worn down by that fatigue, if we're not careful we stop trying altogether. 
or we, we, we settle and just kind of accept something less than what we, we see God kind of promise and talk about and we, we hoped for. Or worst case scenario, we start to ask if any of this is really we true and, and we pull away from God. You know, you're in your, your own home. Um, you don't have to put up your hand or, or, or anything else, but just be honest with yourself. Have you ever found yourself in a place where you are questioning God in that kind of a way? How long? How, how long will, will I be single? How long will my marriage be strained and, and, and difficult rather than the joy and the blessing that I thought it would be? How, how long am I going to keep on struggling and, and battling with, with the same kind of temptations? How long will I, I keep losing my temper when I don't want to? How long until the healing that you've promised it is something that I don't just kind of look forward to, but I get to live in and experience? How long, how long will you allow this to go on, God? Where are you? You, you promised to be close, but, but you seem so distant. Ever, ever found yourself there? Ever asked those kind of questions? You know, these are real and honest questions. And one of the things that I love about the Bible is that it is real and honest with us. Do you know, hero after hero in the Bible knew pain, and knew the struggles of, of these kind of questions that we can wrestle with. We know that, that that's the case and, and we see it. And, but you know, we get, very little, um, we get very little given to us in the Bible to answer that question, how long? Or to answer why these things happen. Why do we face these struggles? You know, we, we know that right now we live in the midst of a fallen, broken, hurting world that because of sin in our world, all of creation is groaning, longing, kind of shouting that question, how long? Longing to be made new. And we know that God is at work to make all things new. But until that day, we still live in the midst of the brokenness and in, with all of the pain and the suffering that that brings. I talked a couple of weeks ago about the reality of the spiritual battle that we are in. That this life isn't a, a lived out on a, on a playground, but a battleground. As we go through life, we face real opposition. We know as we read Isaiah 55 verses 8 to 9 that God's ways are not our ways. That his thoughts are not our thoughts. That our understanding and our view of things is limited. And sometimes what we think is the best thing to, to happen and that we're praying for isn't. And, and so we pray and we, we have our view of the situation. And so we kind of come together and say, God, will you, will you help me with this? Will you do A, B or, or C? And God says, none of the above. My plan and my purpose is D. And you might not understand what I'm doing or see how that fits. But I've got a better way. The thing is that when we're struggling, when we're crying out to God, how long is this going to last? Or, or why is this happening? You know, these don't always feel like very satisfactory answers, do they? And the place that I've come to is that the why is beyond me. Who, who, who am I to try and, and fathom and explain away the mind and the purposes of God? But while the, the why might be beyond me, a far more important question isn't. A question that the Bible clearly answers for us again and again is, is not the question how long, but the question how do I walk through this? How do I pray in the midst of it. And so I want to take a prayer of, of David as a model for us to, to learn from as to how to pray in the midst of questions, in the midst of struggles, in the midst of pain. And so we're going to look at Psalm 13 and, um, and David starts his prayer with the, the question that, that we've been asking. He prays, 
how long, Lord? Will you, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I, I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How, how long will my enemy triumph over me? I don't know about you, but as I read those words, I can almost hear and feel the pain of David. He's a man who is hurting, a man who feels like God is absent in the midst of it. And I get the sense of, of someone who, who has prayed and cried out to God again and again, and yet it seems like God is nowhere to be found. And this has been going on for so long that he's been worn down by it. He's tired. He's had enough and it's affecting the way that he's, he's, he thinks and it's affecting his heart. He's wrestling with his thoughts. He feels under attack in his mind and he's full of sorrow. Have you, have you been there? Maybe you're there right now. You're worn down. Tired, wrestling inside of yourself. You, you can just tell that your heart is, is kind of weighed down and heavy. And you're asking God, how long? And you feel like you're met with silence. I don't know about you, but sometimes in that place, it can be made even worse because, because we feel guilty for being there. Like it's somehow our fault that, that we can't be a good Christian. And then what happens is we feel like we can't be honest about times like that. That, that if we say that's how we feel, that, that other Christians just, they just won't get it. Or, or they'll just tell us to, to throw it off. And when we start to feel like that's the case with other people, it's not surprising that we then start to feel like that and it begins to affect the way that we pray and the way that we relate to God. But the first thing that I think we learn from David is to pray honestly. David doesn't hold back with his questions and his struggles. He just kind of lays it all out there. And brings it to God. You know, God wants you to be honest with him. He already knows what you're facing. You're not going to surprise him with any of it. He knows uh, how you feel and the questions you have and that you're wrestling with. So all that happens when we don't verbalise it, all that happens when we try and, and kind of hide it and put on a brave face and, and maybe spiritualise that by, by saying that we want to pray in faith is that actually... We create a greater distance and a greater separation between us and God. He can't meet us in the midst of it because we're not letting him in. The most appropriate way to pray when you're struggling, when you have questions, when you don't know where God is, is to pray honestly. It's to cry out to God and be real with him. To talk to him about the desperation that you feel. About the distance that you feel. And this isn't something for us to kind of feel shame about. Like we're, we're allowed to do it, but it's, it's not really what God wants us to, to do ideally, you know. You know, Jesus prayed like this. In Hebrews 5 verse 7, we read, During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears. You know, we read about it in the Garden of Gethsemane, don't we? God, I don't want to do this. But not my will, but yours. Jesus was honest and real with God. And we need to be too. Until we are honest with God, we're holding him at arm's length and he can't meet us where we need him most. So pray honestly. And then kind of linked in with this, tied in with this, pray vulnerably. You know, David goes on to, to pray in Psalm 13 and, and he says, Lord, look on me. 
and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. As David prays this, he's moving from, from just being honest with God about what he's facing and how he's feeling to being vulnerable with God about how, how without God taking action, he has no hope. He's desperate and he's looking to God as the only one who can help him, his only answer in his time of need. You know, when you are in the, in the midst of pain, when, when life is hard, where do you go? Because when we're in a place of, of need, a place of pain, a place of desperation, do you know, the feeling of that will always drive us towards something. We will look somewhere for the answer. You know, a, a normal thing for us to do is that it will drive us to try and, and escape from the problem or to numb the pain. And we're worn down by it. We're worn down by the fact that we can't fix it, that it isn't going anywhere, that all these different things that we've tried don't work, that nothing seems to be changing. And so over time, we just develop our own coping mechanisms and we learn to run to them. It's what we're driven to, to, to chocolate and ice cream, to, to binge watching Netflix, to alcohol, to sex, to sport. You know, it can be a whole number of different things. But for David, the questions and the pain drive him to be vulnerable with God in prayer. To look to God in prayer is to move beyond being honest to being vulnerable with him. Recognising that, that you can't do it on your own. That you need God's help or things will, will never change. And David says it this way, he says, God, give light to my eyes or I may very well die. He's desperate for God's help. And we can pray like this. We can be this brutally honest with God. We can be this desperate with God. This is what relationship looks like. It's real and honest. It, it involves the hard conversations. You know, we often feel like we kind of need to be, be strong and have it all together in life. And, and that can kind of carry over into our relationship with God. That, that we've kind of got to have it all together and pray in this particular way and, and, and do things in this way. Otherwise, we're, we're not in that kind of right position. And, but, you know, how, how we... How we approach prayer, kind of that, that doorway that opens, opens a way for us to be able to experience God's provision. The, you know, the, the kind of doorway that opens up to, for, to enable us to, to allow God to meet us in the place of our greatest need is the doorway of vulnerability. It's coming to God not in our strength, but in our weakness. So pray honestly, pray vulnerably, and lastly, pray confidently. David finishes his prayer by saying, In the midst of all of this, I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. Now it can, be, it can be easy when life is hard, when we're weary and tired, when things have kind of dragged on for a long time, for it to pull, pull our gaze off of Jesus, to make us lose sight of the, of the hope and the confidence that we have in him. And do you know what? I, I get it. I've been there. David doesn't let that happen. He's honest and real and vulnerable with God. He, he comes to God in his weakness and, in, and with desperation. But he also prays confidently because he knows who God is. He knows God's character. That, that, God, that God's love is, is unfailing. So that no matter how he may feel, no matter how distant it might seem like God is, he puts his trust and confidence in the truth that God's love is unfailing. That God is with him and for him. 
and he might not understand why things are the way they are. He might not understand why he's struggling to see where God is in the midst of it, but he knows that he can have confidence in the character and the nature of God. He knows that his salvation is sure. So that even if things are difficult now, he knows that he has good ahead of him. That this time of difficulty won't last forever. That nothing can rob him of his salvation. And a day is coming when he will get to experience the fullness of all God has for him. And so he reminds himself and he praises God then for the times in, in the past when, when God has put his love into, and his goodness into action for him. The times when he's seen God's provision and God's rescue and God's healing in his life. You know, I, I don't know about you, but when things get hard, I can get sucked into the problem in such a way that it can become all that I see and it can start to taint um, my view of everything else. And when that happens, if, if I'm not careful, if I'm not intentional and purposeful, I know that I will lose sight of God. I will lose sight of who he is and all that he's done in, in, in that moment. And so as we pray, it's so important to stop and remember who we're talking to. To praise him and to thank him for who he is and what he's done. And if you're in a place where you're really struggling to, to do that and, and you, you're struggling to see where God is in the now and maybe you're even struggling to see where God has been over the, the years for you. If you're struggling in that, then look all the way back to the cross. Look to Jesus. Remember what he has done, what, what he has achieved, his love put into action for you, his sacrifice for you and what that means. All that you have in him. And let that stir your heart to be able to pray confidently. To pray from a place where you can rejoice in your salvation. That your future is secure in him. You know, we will, we will all face times and situations where our hearts cry to God. It's how long? And if you find yourself in that place when you're wrestling with the, with the question, God, where are you? Don't let your struggle to understand why this is happening cause you to lose sight of the clear answer we are given as to how to walk through it. Pray honestly. Be real with God. Pray vulnerably. Be willing to be, be weak and desperate and, and tell God how much you need him and pray confidently. Remember who it is that, that you're praying to, that he is your heavenly father who loves you, who is for you. He has an unfailing love. And when we remind ourselves who we are praying to and all that he has done, it helps us to know that whatever we are facing, it will be okay. That we have salvation in him, that the best is yet to come. And so in the midst of the questions, in the midst of the, the struggles, we keep going. We keep trusting and we keep praying. And I guess really that's just my... My big encouragement to you. This will probably be the, the last kind of message um, on a Sunday on the end. It's part of teaching, teach us to pray. And I'll keep doing short messages in, in the week. But I want really just that big encouragement to be what I leave you with. Keep praying. In the hard times, don't pull away from God. Keep praying. In, in the good times, don't grow complacent. Keep praying. Praying. When you, when you feel strong, choose to humble yourself and keep praying. And, and when you feel weak, know that God is longing for you to invite him into your weakness. That your weakness doesn't disqualify you. That he wants to come into your weakness and be your strength. So keep praying. You know, when life is busy and you're struggling to make time for things, keep praying. And you need to find the, the best way for you to keep praying. 
And, and so I'd encourage you to, to plan in, be intentional, plan in a regular time in the day when you have, have that intentional time with God. It's wonderful being able to pray and spend time with God and that being part of every moment of every day that it's, it's a relationship with him all the time. But as with any relationship though, we need to invest specific time um, with that person for that relationship to grow and flourish. So think about what that looks like for you, when in the day that can be. Uh, and you might find that best to do with a notepad in hand so that you can write um, your prayers down. That sometimes can help me to focus if I'm writing a prayer down rather than just keeping it all in my head. Or it might be that, that having a notepad helps you to listen and to be intentional about not just you talking to God, but listening to what he has to say to you. Uh, you might find it easiest to go out for a walk and pray. That's brilliant. Jesus did it. He often went up onto the mountainside to pray. You might find it easiest to, to say, oh, well, I just need a quiet place on my own to go into my bedroom and close the door. Fantastic. You know, that's exactly what Jesus teaches us to do in, in Matthew 6. Whatever it looks like for you, be intentional and keep praying. I believe that God is inviting you on an adventure with prayer. As you grow to know him more, as you allow him to work in you more, and as you step out and pray in faith and see his power released more. And, and if you don't know Jesus and all this is new to you, then, then you know what? Prayer is a great place to start. Uh, maybe it's my message to you isn't keep praying, but my message is this, try praying. And please get in touch, you know, we'd love to connect with you and help you learn more about who Jesus is and how you can have a relationship with him. Right now, I know we're all in our own homes, but while we're taking time out to fix our eyes on God, I just want to make some space for us to put this all into practice. And it may well be that you're you, you're in a place right now where you are crying out to God, how long? Where you're, you're struggling and full of questions. And so before we get kind of sucked back into just kind of life and busyness and family and all the different things that go on, I want to encourage you to make space to pray honestly, pray vulnerably and pray confidently. I so said, I'm going to leave a few moments uh, kind of quiet now. Um, what I'd love you to be able to do, if, if you can, is just pause the video. To, to pause the video, go and get a piece of paper and a pen and, and write your prayer down so that you can, you can, you can turn it into a psalm like David. It, it can help sometimes just to slow down, to be intentional, to think about what does it mean for me to pray honestly, to pray vulnerably, to pray confidently, and, and just writing it down can, can really help with that. And if you can't do that now, if, if life at the moment doesn't allow you to kind of carve that space out right now, then, then try and make space uh, later. But for all of us, I just want to leave a few moments for us to, to put this into practice, to look to God, to pray ourselves honestly, vulnerably and confidently. So let's do that now. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are here and that you are with us. Thank you for your unfailing love. And I pray that right now by your spirit you would pour your love into the hearts of each and every person watching this. That, that whatever they're going through, wherever they're at, that you would just grow in them a confidence in, in who you are. In your love for them. And Lord, that yes, that would stir us up in, in, in courage, that would stir us up in boldness, that would stir up our, our kind of confidence in you in a way that enables us to step out. But I pray, Lord, that it would also move in our hearts to enable us to greater honesty and greater vulnerability with you. Lord, that as we know your unfailing love, it would give us a security in you 
that helps each and every one of us to open ourselves up and to invite you into the deepest places where we need you most. That by your spirit right now you would minister to hurts and pains and wounds that people have carried. Right now that you would come and, and Lord, that, that you would just uh, move people to, to a place where they, where even though they may not understand why things are happening, that they would have a confidence in you in the midst of it. And Lord, we do pray that, that where there is a need, where, that, where there is that desperate cry for, for you to come and meet us in, in a place of need, that you would move right now in your mercy, in your grace, by your power, you would move right now to bring healing, to bring restoration, to, to uh, bring transformation of character and hearts. Lord, that you would move right now, that we, we would release your power into lives and situations, that we would see your power breaking into the here and now. That we would have testimonies of your goodness that can encourage and stir faith. But more than anything, Lord, I just pray that you would make yourself known. So that no matter what happens in our circumstances, no matter what goes on around us, we would not be shaken in our hope in you. That you, our hope in you would be one that is firm and steadfast and un, and because we know your unfailing love. We can rejoice in our salvation in you, knowing that whatever's going on now, the best is yet to come, that, that this is only temporary, that we have an eternity with you to look forward to. Lord, stir us up in faith, in our confidence in you. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you that we can come to you as we are, knowing that you never turn us away. Come and meet with each person now in Jesus' name. Amen.